Welcome to the Quick Start Guide to using Sequence Ninja. The easy way to get started is find a folder that you have some sequences in, right click and go to the Sequence Ninja. It'll open our app window here and we can see we have Sequence Ninja Promo version 5, that's PNG sequence. Uh, it's currently just showing us the latest version, as you can see in here, there's actually four more versions in here. If we want to see those, we can uncheck this latest version and see all the versions here. Uh, sequences with missing frames will highlight in red, like this, and we can hover over them and see missing 15 to 20, uh, as, long as, as, as well as other useful information like the path to the sequence, star frame, main frame, other versions, uh, variables, which we'll cover later, uh, output paths, and audio. So uh, options we have here are profiles, you can select what you'd like to encode to, uh, FPS, what frame rate you want, uh, and audio. So if we uncheck this, there's no audio. And if we click it again, we can specify an audio file, or we can have it checked like this, uh, which is the automatic audio. And what that'll do is find any audio file within the folder of the sequence or any parent folders and apply that. So here we've got Sequence Ninja Promo web file. And if we highlight the sequence, we can see audio and it's correctly found that. So that will be applied to the output. So we do a quick test. Uh, let's say we want to encode a few versions. So let's just say we might want to encode just version four and five. Hit convert. And now it's running each of these encodes in its own thread. You can have as many of these as you like. It will uh, automatically allocate based on how many threads that you've got on your machine. We'll just let this run. And there we go. Now, when they've completed, you've got a little encoded button here. You click that, it'll take you to the window where it's output. And you can see we've now got our sequences correctly encoded. Uh, so what else can we do? Uh, what if you've got uh, more specific requirements uh, for a particular job. So let's edit our profiles. We can create new profiles in here. Let's get rid of this one for now. So you can delete them. You can click this plus button to duplicate them, change the settings, or you can click new to create a new one, double click to rename them, drag them to reorder. Uh, the profile that's at the top is going to be the default when you open the app. Uh, hit save and it will store those for you. Got a job that requires uh, something a bit more custom. Bit custom. So this is uh, basically if you want to tweak uh, an encoding setting and just use it once off. So say for this uh, we want uh, an H.264. We want a ProRes. Uh, let's just say standard ProRes, and we want maybe an H.264 that's a square aspect ratio. So we'll make the first one a suffix. We'll say. Preview. And for the second one, we'll say suffix underscore square. And the square one we'll need to crop. Uh, so the defaults uh, at the moment for crop do nothing. Uh, so you take the, the width, use as the width, take the height, use as the height. And the defaults for the X and Y basically is just the center point of the video. Uh, so what I'll do if I want to make this square. It's currently 16.9, so I know that to make it square, I need to multiply it by 0 0.565, and that will output a square for us. And let's hit OK. And now we can hit convert and let that run. So you can see we're outputting a preview MP4, we're outputting a ProRes, and we're outputting a square MP4. Uh, once that's done encoding, we can double check to make sure that we've got our square crop working correctly. There we go, all done. We can see we've successfully cropped this into a square. Uh, so that's particularly useful for uh, if you're going master comp and you've output lots of different aspect ratios for different uh, ad placements or social media uh, channels. Uh, also for projection type work where you might need to uh, split a larger comp into smaller uh, pieces for different projectors or different cameras. Um, 
if we decided that, so we can see here we've got this custom profile because it's got the asterisk on it. Uh, if we want to save that, we don't want to throw that away when we close the app. But then just hit custom to edit that again. And if we just name it something, so we'll say Power Test and hit OK, now it's going to store that as a profile. So we're going to have to throw that away if we don't want to. And now if we edit profiles, we can see it should be in there. Yep, promo test is done. Uh, other options that we've got, let's have a look at any preferences. So most of the preferences here are just sort of setting the defaults. But the interesting ones to look at here are enabling logging, which will output a text file alongside any encodes, uh, telling you, giving you information on how the encode went. Uh, this is useful if you have some encodes fail and you're not sure why, turn on the logging, run it again, and you should be able to see uh, some information about why that might be happening. Um, path regex, date format, and publish path. So we'll have a look at these now. So these are useful if you want to output to uh, a location for previews, maybe it's for dailies, maybe it's for uh, client review, or maybe it's for uh, actual deliveries. Uh, so publish path is just the default path that we use. You can see that we've got these curly bracket names in here. So these paths support uh, variables. So it will support all environment variables, as well as this built-in date variable, which will use this formatting to create a folder with today's date. I use the format uh, with two digits for year, month, and day. Um, but you can change that formatting in here to whatever you'd like to use. Uh, the path regex uh, basically is just going to use a reg regular expression on the path to the sequence, and it will capture variables in the path to then use in these uh, published paths. So that's useful if you're working in a, a pretty strict pipeline and there's um, very predefined places that uh, outputs need to go per job, per client, uh, per shop. Um, if you don't need to worry about that, if you don't need to use that sort of thing, don't worry about it, you can just leave this here, but it's a really useful feature to have. Um, it just works with standard regular expression rules, so you just need to make sure you're capturing the entire path, which is why at the end here I've got a dot star, so it's just sort of capturing everything on the end. And you can see I'm capturing named groups. Um, so we've got root, and that's capturing any capital letters followed by a colon, and so that way I'm capturing the drive letter. Um, and we've got projects folder, and then I'm capturing uh, the client name, which I've specified is just any sequence of letters. And then a job name, which is any sequence of letters again. And a sequence name, which is any sequence of letters. But you can tweak this however you like. Uh, so we can see what that's doing. If we go back into here, if I hover over my sequence, you can see I've got regex variables listed here with root, client, job, and sequence. And so now those all can be used in the output. Uh, so in the output here, by default, it's set to from preset. So if we have a look in here, you can just see directory. So for each output that you've got per profile, this is the output path or the output directory. So you can use uh, relative references like what we've got here, which is a dot dot slash. So we're going to encode to one folder above. That way you're not putting the video file in with hundreds of other image files and it might get lost. Um, but if you want to just render it to exactly where the image sequence it is, you can just put nothing. Um, or you can specify a path, so you can have a C drive wherever you want. Um, or uh, we can override that. So we've got a few options here. So I'll go over what copy and output are first. So output straight up just overrides what the profile outputs are. So if I have this set to from preset, it's going to use that uh, directory from the profile itself. If I have this set to output, it's going to output it to uh, this location instead of that uh, profile path. So you're, you're overriding it and outputting it here instead. If we set it to copy, it's going to do both. It'll output it to where the profile wants, and then it'll make a copy of it in that published location. Uh, so this is useful if you've got a directory where you're keeping track of all your renders, and then you've also got a separate client folder that you want to sort of send an update to as well. Uh, and we've got publish versions of these. So publish copy will do a copy, but it will also then publish your image sequence as a zipped archive to the published location. And publish output will 
override all of the paths in your profiles and then also publish that sequence. Um, we can also just publish directly if we want. So we can right click and say publish. And you've got this path here. So I can hit publish and it will make that path for me. We've got a button that tells us where the publish location is. We can click it and that will open an explorer window for us. And you can see it's created its publish folder, today's date, and it's zipped our sequence up for us. There's also a few uh, context menu items that are useful. So if we right click on a sequence, we can hit play, and it'll play that back for us in an FF play window. Um, you can open an explorer and it'll find the sequence for you. Of course, these will work with multiples as well. So if I select all three of these and say open an explorer, it'll open three explorer windows for me. Uh, we can open output folders and that'll take us to the output locations. Uh, for these, uh, we can rename. So I can grab a sequence, and here's the name of it here. And so you can very easily rename something. So Promo renamed, and we can also change the frame padding as well. So we've got percent zero four D here. If I change that to instead of a frame padding of four, it's a frame padding of something ridiculous like eight. Hit rename. And it's done that for us. And so that pretty much covers all the features of Sequence Ninja. I hope you find the tool useful. Enjoy!